Like it. There's a little sand. So the last time that I was out on this trail, I was on the, the 2022 KLR 650. Now today we're out here testing out the Tenere 700 Woo. to see how it does over the big jumps at Harrison Hills. I gotta say I'm definitely happy to be back out on this bike. It, it, it really does feel woo, quite a bit different in a I'm kind of almost hesitant on those jumps now because I was kind of having bottoming issues with the KLR where, woo, this I, I really got tuned nicely. Oh, shit, look out. <laughs> I always get my boots stuck under it. God, there's nothing to grab on this thing. No, I didn't, let, let me try it myself. Little help? Uh, no, I'm just trying to find the right spot to grab it here. And there he goes. Ooh, good thing it was on this side, not that side. Why? <laughs> oh, the camera. You guys, ever done that where you, you kind of forget to pick your foot up off of your gnarly, pokey foot peg, and it just stays right on? <laughs> A little embarrassing, but ah, whatever. I don't care. Jumps are nice that they build, but boy, that new dirt kind of just something different you're not used to <laughs> yeah it really is yeah I was hoping this would be a nice even comparison there's only a couple weeks apart but I guess when they groom that changes things a bit yeah it sure does and that's oh UTV UTV we got a lot of UTVs a whole bunch of them oh Whoa. oh another one oh two They're probably wondering why I'm not showing how many are behind me, but I'm not taking my hands off the bars. <laughs> not in this stuff. You know what I was saying? That I don't think I ever bottomed this thing out, but I think I actually just did bottom it out. Maybe I should move that compression damping up another click. Yeah, I don't know. Is this dirt or is it like wet sand? Yeah, it's, it's a little different than what we're used to. A little bit of a learning curve here. Yeah, it definitely is. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I want some hard pack. Yeah. Yeah, so as far as the, the road riding goes, I, I do have to say that I think this thing could probably use some handlebars that have a little bit more sweep to them still. The risers, I think, may have helped, and they feel good off-road, but I still am nowhere near as comfortable on this as I am on the KLR. And I, I guess I, I say it like that, like it's a huge difference. I mean, it's it's noticeable. It's not that bad. The, the Tenere is still more than comfortable enough to ride up here. It's not like a DRZ or something. Of course, the power, well, there's really no comparison there. The sound, maybe when I get a different pipe on the KLR. But if you guys have any suggestions, whoa, this is messy up here. Almost went down. Almost went down. Oh, yeah. Now, if you have any suggestions for a pipe, let me know what you want to see or hear on the KLR. Oh, I can see where you almost went down. Yeah. Whoa. Walking, walking side to side pretty hard there. Yeah, you, whoa. Yeah. Shh. Okay, I don't like the dirt. Yeah, usually this bike handles loose stuff really well, but I think it's uh, it's like driving through kind of wet concrete or something. It's, it's not great. Kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as the on-trail manners go, another quad coming. Uh, this thing does really still very well. Um, it, it is a little bit more noisy on the back end, the, the chatter that I've kind of always complained about a bit. Um, but uh, again, I don't really think that's actually anything bad, just a, a little bit of noise that you gotta ignore. I, I think with the, the stock suspension anyways, does handle the trails better than the KLR does. Not that the KLR does bad, it definitely is more than adequate, I think. Uh, this thing definitely does feel heavier on the trail, especially in this kind of concrete stuff. Uh, the KLR, I think partially it is because you're just a little bit closer to the ground. 
but it's also that on this bike all of my fuel all three gallons of it or whatever it is is all like above my knees it's mostly up here i suppose where the taylor 650 most of it is actually way down here and um i mean very little of it is above your knees that definitely helps keep your center of gravity low the the motor itself i think is a, a bit higher in this bike too where the klr it's lower and probably doesn't weigh near as much and what is ben recommending i get for my next bike i think i definitely would stick with the the klr 650 for you and i've kind of talked to a couple other guys that are in your uh age range and i mean even for me myself i mean i i definitely have to be on my toes a lot more with this bike um both from the, the power standpoint and also the actual just handling of the bike because it, it it definitely handles the, the off-road stuff well and because of the the nice rake and i think the even just the suspension and setup in the back it is a, a pretty stable bike but it's still a heavy bike to be riding riding through loose <laughs> stuff like this <laughs> you get some hair back there uh, i did a nice fish tail around the corner ah it was fun obviously there are those that will much prefer the tenere for the reasons that i've kind of outlined but i think i think the klr definitely is something that is worth considering as whoa especially for the the price i'm kind of glad that i don't have the klr though because those friggin uh i don't even know what the heck the tires are i kind of want to forget what they are stock those yeah the stock tires are are not so great for wet stuff and i don't know that they would do so well on here yeah now I, man i feel like i am hitting the bottom of the suspension on this i'm gonna have to click my compression up a little bit Woo. Alley-oop. oh that was the bottom of the suspension why did i think this was fixed I guess maybe I'm just going a little bigger than I was when I was testing it to begin with. Woo. Yeah, this will be a lot nicer when this dirt gets packed down. Oh yeah. I like the jump so. Uh-huh. I haven't had this thing off the ground too much before today and I think I've had it off like four times. Yeah, I suppose when the when those jumps get hit a bunch of times they eventually get knocked down and the rain and stuff too, but yeah, they're they're fresh today. I definitely did notice a, a bit more vibration on the KLR around 50 and I think it actually does smooth out a bit after that but this bike of course is just much smoother kind of the, the whole power band but it seems like the KLR really does okay on the highway it doesn't really feel like you're stressing it out too much um, where uh, of course this I mean you could probably do 90 miles an hour and it wouldn't feel stressed uh, the other thing I noticed actually is I, I had stuck another GPS on the, the GPS bar on the KLR and the uh, GPS kept telling me that it was losing its power source. And I think that is because woo, that bar on the KLR is a uh, woo, a good receptor for all the vibrations that the KLR does put out. And that GPS on that bike was just humming where this one, I, I grabbed it doing 60, 70 miles an hour and it's like almost completely still. It's like not doing anything at all. What do you mean for somebody your age? Somebody your age? What I, what I said before? Yeah. Well, no, there were just a bunch of people that told me how old they were and asked oh. what, I, what, what I thought. Uh. And yeah, I mean, I, I think anybody could, anybody would enjoy the, the power and, and sound of this bike, but just the, the lower seat height and the, the more friendly, lighter feeling handling on the, on the KLR, I think is definitely something that a lot of people are gonna appreciate. Yeah, I would like that. And I, I gotta say, when I when I push this thing in the, around the garage, I think it's partially that the, the handlebars are like a foot higher than the way they are on the KLR. But this thing feels a heck of a lot heavier. Whoa! And they're about the same weight, huh? Supposedly, I gotta I gotta buy two two scales to weigh them both. I keep saying I'm gonna do that, and I haven't ordered them yet. You said that bike is somebody was telling you that, it, or you read it somewhere that it was supposed to be for light gravel roads oh yeah all the time yeah yeah somebody was telling me that about the klr too and i was oh my god complaining about it not having crash bars and stuff i'm like ah if you're using it for light light gravel roads maybe that's what they say it's intended for but you can do a heck of a lot more with a, a tiger and a klr than light gravel roads oh yeah i'm almost at twenty-one thousand, and uh you know we've done quite a bit of this and yeah this bike is held up really well yeah yeah my, my gen 2 always did too i mean i think we, we've done some pretty extreme stuff with them maybe not in the grand scheme of things but compared to what they you know what they market them as and i think they're they're definitely definitely able to take it can you smell the uh cedar uh no no <laughs> i can smell it for a little bit there Woo. Woo -hoo. 
Well, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of sliding. Yeah. <laughs> you taking a break? Yeah, might as well. All right, so we were actually stopped once already, and I adjusted this quick. Turned it two clicks up and realized that that was maybe too much. Always good to do one at a time, not two. We're going back down. Let's see if we still bottom out. Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, I think this bike takes a, a bit more to, to kind of flick it around with the, the KLR thing just because of that lower center of gravity. It's a lot easier to do, I think. Not that this one's bad or like hard, it's just noticeable. It might be that my arm's a little tired too, but <laughs> who knows. One thing that I'm really not a fan of with this bike, and I've actually got it adjusted all the way up, but the, the rear brake lever is just like always too low and too squishy to really get anything out of really whether you're sitting or standing, but especially standing up, it's like it doesn't even do anything. You gotta like really dig deep to get it to lock the back tire up if you need it to. Whoa, well, there was the front. <laughs> knock, knock the front suspension, the back feels good. Uh, actually, that might have bottomed the back. Honestly, though, I think I might just leave it how it is. I really want to tune the bike for giant hits like that. I'm purposely launching it to try to bottom it out, which I guess maybe isn't really <laughs> the way you want to tune a bike, but I don't know. It's worth playing with, I guess. Maybe I'll click them all up a little bit and see if I can get used to it. And I'll take some messing around with, and if you don't want to do too much of that, then maybe the KLR is better since you don't really have any adjustments to make. And woo, if you like playing with that sort of stuff, then Maybe the Tenere is for you. Every bike has its purpose. No bike is good or bad. As long as they can get you out and enjoy stuff like this. Look at them leaves. That is pretty cool. So thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this was informative, helpful, and enjoyable. If it was, make sure to hit that like button and let me know down in the comment box below. If you have any more comments or questions, feel free to leave them down there as well. I try to get back to everybody. Other than that, guys, if you can get out and enjoy this beautiful world for yourself, make sure you do that. However, if you can't, whoa, then yikes. Make sure you're subscribed. Click the bell after you subscribe so let's you know every time I put a video out. And uh, if you want to check some more out right now, here they are at the top. Take care, stay safe, and stay swanky.